Welcome to yet another episode of Community First, where we have legal and social conversations with the community. I am Mame Banye Iduamwa, a senior legal associate at BMP Associates, and I'll be your host for this episode. On our last episode, we were privileged to have in our studios Mrs. Frederica Ahuren Obeng, who took us through the legal steps to say I do in Ghana. We're certain you enjoyed that last episode where we discussed the three types of marriages in Ghana, how a marriage, a valid marriage can be created, as well as the legal effects of a failed ordinance marriage. Flowing from that conversation, we've had inquiries about how to go about a divorce or legally end a marriage. So on today's episode, we bring you cutting loose, ending things when they break down beyond reconciliation. In this episode, we hope to learn what a divorce is, the right to divorce, and the proper procedure for filing a divorce in Ghana under all the three types of marriages, the restrictions, and all ancillary or supplementary issues. We'll also learn about whether legal separation exists in Ghana, as well as annulment of marriages. It is said, if it's nice, play it twice. The feedback from our last episode was overwhelmingly positive. And so to help us unpack today's topic, we thought why not bring back our family law connoisseur, none other than Mrs. Frederica Ahuring Obeng once again. Welcome, Mrs. Ahuring Obeng. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for gracing our seats once again. So without much ado, we'll get right into today's topic. Okay. Um, today we're discussing divorce and we know that divorce is about ending a marriage. But does anybody at all have the right to divorce? Um, yes. Once a person is in a valid marriage, the person has a right to divorce okay but this right of course is subject to certain conditions okay. yes okay so um we learned in the last episode that there are three different types of marriages that's the customary marriage mohammedan marriage and the marriage under um, part three of the marriages acts which we commonly refer to as the ordinance marriage so i'd like to know for each of these three types of marriage, um, is there a special way for each? So is to each his own, or there's one way you can divorce from all these three types of marriages? Um, yes, a person in, um, in an ordinance marriage has to follow a certain procedure in order to bring the marriage to an end. Okay. So two parties, husband and wife, in an ordinance marriage cannot decide by themselves to bring a marriage to an end. They have to go to the court. Mm -hmm. The same with the Mohammedan marriage. Yes, the Mohammedan marriage may be brought to an end by the individuals following their customary way as to uh, how to bring a marriage to an end. And then when it comes to customary law marriage, yes, the same thing happens. A customary law marriage may be dissolved customarily. However, I need to add that a customary law marriage and a Mohammedan marriage may also be dissolved by the courts. So parties may approach the courts to have the marriage properly dissolved. Okay, so we are saying that for customary law marriages and Mohammedan marriages, they have two options as to how they can divorce. Exactly. They may dissolve the marriage customarily or they may also approach the courts for the marriage to be dissolved. So with the customary law marriage, generally what is the customary way for divorcing? Or oh, the customary law marriage, if a, a parties want to dissolve a marriage customarily, it's quite simple because the two parties have to choose the date to meet. Okay. And then they try to reconcile the parties. Mm -hmm. If they are not able to reconcile the parties, then of course what they call there's something they call the render account. Okay. The man owes the woman or and vice versa. You know, after rendering accounts and um, I guess that's the end of the marriage, unless the husband, the man wants the dowry which was presented mm. during the creation of the marriage to be returned. If he wants his dowry, the dowry is given back to him and the marriage is uh, dissolved. 
okay customarily so it's not compulsory for the diary to be returned because usually we hear they they had to send the drinks back it doesn't mean that it's you necessarily have to do that it's only when it's requested when the mar yes when it is requested okay but imagine that a diary was given 25 years ago the parties have been married for mm. 30 years i mean what would be the, the value, value of a drink exactly but if they insist then you give them the drink and that will be it okay but sometimes you see if the cause of the dissolution of the marriage if the husband is the cause of the dissolution of the marriage then maybe the diary will not be returned okay yeah how about the mohammedan marriage customarily what's the way it is dissolved oh customarily it will also be dissolved according to the uh, the custom of the tribe or custom of the parties to the marriage okay. in other words the tribal uh, customary law okay. will de de determine how the marriage should be dissolved okay That's as i may add again that if it is too complicated there are some parties are refusing to meet etc etc then the party who is desirous of dissolving the marriage can approach the courts. Okay. Forget about custom, go to the courts, and the courts will help you for the marriage to be dissolved. Okay, that's that's very enlightening. Um, so let's zero in on ordinance marriage. We've talked about the Mohammedan marriage and the customary marriage and how those can be dissolved. How about ordinance marriage? Dissolution yes. of an ordinance marriage. Yes. Well, you see, uh, dissolution of a, a an ordinance marriage must always be done by the courts okay. and the procedure is a little bit uh, you know complicated it's not as as easy as yes, dissolving others. customarily mm -hmm. because then a petition has to be filed and then there should be answer etc etc so in these instances many a times the parties need a, a lawyer mm -hmm. to assist however if the parties are married under the ordinance and they don't have any um, properties, they haven't acquired any uh, substantial amount of uh, properties, mm. then they can always go to the district court. Okay. So if the parties do not have money and they are married under the ordinance, what they can do is to approach the registrar of a district court in other words, a magistrate court. Okay. Ask for the necessary forms for the dissolution of a marriage. The registrar can assist you to complete the form and the forms will then be filed. Okay. And, the, and the, the marriage will then, I mean, the dissolution will eventually be placed before a magistrate. You okay. Know, and who then? will then dissolve the marriage. Okay. So that in order not to incur unnecessary expenses, you exactly. know, going to see a lawyer, filing a petition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah. if you don't have the means, then always approach the registrar of uh, a district court okay. for assistance. Okay. So just piggybacking off that, the, I have a scenario here. So um, Maya's husband has been saying that he wants to divorce her, and she's also tired of the marriage and wants out. She has told him that she wants to leave and he says he will sign anything for the marriage to end. She has heard that divorces are very long and expensive. Is there a shortcut for Maya? I'm guessing what she just described could be an option for her. Exactly. Go to the district court, talk to the registrar, complete the forms and you are good to go. I've also heard about consent judgments when it comes to divorce petitions. Is that is that an option? consent judgment. in the sense that um maybe the parties just want to agree that this is how even though there's property involved they agree that this is how we want to share the property and so they put something on paper and go to court is that yes, a possible option is. for them exactly so if the parties agree on the sharing of the properties then of course they are making everything simpler mm -hmm. so all they do is they can actually share the properties themselves okay. and then approach the court for a dissolution of the marriage. Okay. And then for a confirmation by the court of the agreement okay. as to how the property should be shared. Exactly. The agreement, yes. Okay.
Okay. So um, coming back to how the divorce should go, you mentioned that you start off by filing a petition. I have heard that there's only one basis for which you can divorce in Ghana. Is that the case? Oh, yes. You see, one, there's only one ground. And all that it means is that the party who is seeking to come out of the marriage should be able to prove to the court that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation. In other words, there is nothing else that can bring the parties together. Mm. So the party seeking divorce must be able to establish this to the court. Otherwise, the court will not grant the divorce. So if I want to divorce and I go to court and the court, I think that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation, but the court thinks that there's a way out. They won't allow me to divorce. Exactly. The court will not dissolve the marriage. You know, people always think that, oh, once we have come to court mm -hmm. for the marriage to be dissolved, then who is the judge to say that we can't? Exactly. But that is the law. The law says if you fail to prove that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation, mm -hmm. if you fail... The judge should not dissolve the marriage. In other words, the judge should send the parties away to try and reconcile. Mm. Because, you see, marriage is a special uh, entity yes. before God and man. Yeah. And yeah. therefore, it has to be protected. That's very interesting because yes. you think that once it's my divorce, I can just go ahead and divorce. Yeah. But the court actually has to say. Exactly. Also, you talked about the fact that aside that is the one ground, but I'm guessing there are other facts that yes. you can rely on exactly. if you can throw some light on that. Okay. Well, uh, so the law says that you must prove that the marriage has broken down. How do you prove mm -hmm. to the court that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation? In this case, you see, you may state that, oh, my husband has committed adultery or my wife has committed adultery. And therefore, I find it, I mean, repulsive, mm. intolerable to continue to live with her. Mm. So if you're able to establish adultery, then chances are that the court will grant a dissolution of the marriage. Mm. But it is important here for the parties to know that just seeing your wife talking to another man or seeing a note from another man, etc., etc., those things do not amount to adultery. If a person wants to rely on adultery, there must be evidence of sexual intercourse. So if I, um, a husband happens to see the wife in a room with the man, they are just on the bed. Would that be enough? That could be also. You see, the court would then draw an inference. Okay. The court would then say that, oh, wow, is a married woman, what is a married woman doing with another man on, the, on their matrimonial bed? No. From that, the mm. court can then draw a conclusion that mm. the sexual intercourse has taken place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you have unreasonable behavior too. One can use unreasonable behavior to prove that, oh, the marriage is terrible. It has broken down beyond reconciliation. Husband beating the wife all the time and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Woman beating the husband all the time, you know. Woman refusing to cook for the husband. Mm -hmm. Husband coming home drunk. Woman nagging all the time, asking the husband unnecessary questions, disrespecting your husband in public. You know, all those things, mm -hmm. if it's gone on for, uh, you know, it's happened for a number of times, the court is likely to come to a conclusion that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you also have desertion. A man may desert a woman, a wife, for more than two years. The law says that the husband must have gone or the other spouse could be the wife, the husband, must have gone away for more than two years. Okay. So if it's 18 months, 12 months, later, one cannot talk of desertion. It has but to even, be two years. Uh, yeah, exactly. It has to be more okay. than two years. And even during that, if the husband comes and goes, mm. he comes and goes. You <laughs> can't use that. Exactly. The husband, the court may say that, oh, but he goes and then he comes. So 
doesn't really amount mm. to desertion or if he sends you money and stuff like that it should be total complete yes, he must go away you don't hear from him you don't see him he doesn't send you money mm. <clears throat> excuse me if this has gone on for more than two years then the courts will come to conclusion again that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation okay okay um, not to take you back, but with the unreasonable behavior. So who decides what's unreasonable? Because unreasonable can be relative. Unreasonable can be relative. It's the judge. Okay. The judge will look at the totality of the evidence before him and decide. And this is where the, you know, we say that the uh, objective test uh, mm, okay. comes in. Yes. What would the, would the reasonable man find this behavior unreasonable? Mm. If the answer is yes, then the court will say that uh, there is unreasonable behavior. Then we have um, separation, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, separation, which is about the same as a desertion. Mm -hmm. So if you have been separated for more than two years, again, not hearing, etc., etc., the court will come to a conclusion that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then in the inability to reconcile differences. You see, sometimes uh, parties cannot just, they don't just get on. Mm -hmm. They are not compatible. So everything, one, the wife says one thing, the man says one thing. If it goes on for, again, more than two years, the court will come to a conclusion that marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation. Because, for example, the man, the, the woman is not falling pregnant. Mm -hmm. She has done everything in her power, you know, seen all the specialists. Mm. The man has to go and see a specialist and he refuses. Mm. That's what they usually do. It happens. <laughs> it does. It <laughs> yeah. really does. You know? Yeah. So he refuses. I'm like, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. I have been examined. I am fine. There's nothing wrong with me, my darling. You must also take your turn, see a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then the man refuses. Can you see? Inability to reconcile the difference. differences. So if this has gone on for a while, mm -hmm. a reasonable time, the court will say that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation. That's very worth of notes. And for all of these facts that you mentioned, you kept making reference to a two-year mark. So does it mean that if my marriage is not two years, I'm stuck, I can't divorce, even if we have irreconcilable differences? Well, if, if uh, you see, when it's inability to reconcile, mm. you can say that, well, yes, you don't have to wait for two years. Okay. But when it comes to, when we, we talk of inability to reconcile, this is where you are living together mm -hmm. as husband and wife, mm -hmm. but you don't agree on a number of things. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the separation, you are not together. You don't, maybe you don't live together. You could also be living together in, under one roof, but you don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. You don't cook for the man. He doesn't eat your food. He doesn't talk to you. You don't talk to him. You don't share a bed. You don't give him sex. You don't console him. He doesn't console mm. you. You live together, one roof, can you see? Yes. But then there is still separation. Yes. Because you don't do anything together. If it goes on for two years, uh, no, if it goes on for more than two years, let's say two and a half years, three years, four years, then you can rely on that. But otherwise, anything below, if you can establish the not getting on, the incompatibility, then you don't even have to wait for two years. You are a woman. You want to fall pregnant. The man is saying, no, I'm not going to take any medication. You can try and go to court for, uh, if you, you, you really want to bring the marriage to an end, then you can do so. Okay. I've also heard of um, substantial hardship and depravity yes being basis for which maybe somebody who's less than two years married can consider divorce yeah. can you give us more on that as well yeah exactly you see the laws of ghana tell us that when you enter into a marriage you can't just say that after six years oh i don't want my husband i want to leave i don't want my wife i don't i want to leave 
like I said in the beginning, yeah. because marriage is a special agreement mm -hmm. before God and man, the law says that don't quickly get out of it just because and it's just you've been married for six months, you've been married for 10 months, 18 months. The law says, uh-uh, we have to give them time to try and see whether their marriage can be saved. Mm. However, and therefore, in that instance, you can't go to court until after two years. Mm. However, if during the two years, there is evidence showing that, you know what, oh, the woman is terrible. Mm. He, she's always insulting the man, throwing things at him, etc., etc. The law will say that we are not going to allow this man to suffer for two years before we dissolve the marriage. So if one can establish substantial uh, hardship, then of course the law says, oh, let's just come bring this marriage to mm -hmm. an Sorry. end. However, depravity is where you know, the man is asking, just an example, the man, you get married and then the man says, oh, let's have a blood covenant, you know, mm -hmm. let's to put our blood together and suck and everything. This is scary. Mm -hmm. That's when you have to run. <laughs> or suddenly you realize that the man is gay and he's making all these uh, demands on you. For example, he's asking for anal sex. And you didn't know this until you got married. Mm. That's depravity. And the law will allow you to run away from the man. I mean, we have that, uh, that law, okay. you know, the LGBT thing. And now you get married and the man wants to practice that on yeah. you. You don't have to wait for two years. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's very reassuring. So somebody has a way out if it's less than two years. Exactly. So how about international marriages? Say a Ghanaian marries a foreigner in Ghana or foreigners who come and marry in Ghana. Do all these things apply to them as well? Yes. Okay. It, they will apply. Uh, the, let's say a British guy comes to Ghana and then uh, he wants to marry to a Ghanaian woman and he wants a dissolution of the marriage. Especially, and if it is a, an ordinance marriage, yes, you see, mm -hmm. especially if it's an it doesn't matter, even if it's a customary law marriage, um, the the British guy may petition for a dissolution of marriage before a Ghanaian court. Mm. But the law is that the man should have been in Ghana for a certain period, okay, which is uh, he must have been resident in Ghana for okay. for uh, yeah for a certain period of time, okay. Three years, okay. yeah, and above. So mm -hmm. where there's a divorce and there's property, um, we came to the divorce, I brought my car and um, a piece of land. My husband also brought a car and a piece of land. And then together we also acquired um, some estates. How do we share this? Um, the law is that properties that spouses have before the marriage belongs to them after the marriage. In other words, they are not part of the spousal property. Mm -hmm. So spousal property refers to properties acquired during the marriage. Mm -hmm. What the husband had before the marriage, not part of the spousal property. Okay. Same applies to the woman. Okay. And the law says that spousal property is joint property. Okay. That's the presumption. Okay. Spousal property is presumed to be joint property. Okay. So once the marriage is dissolved, then it is up to one of the spouses to state that, well, yes, these properties were acquired during the marriage, but they cannot be spousal property because the woman did not make any contribution. Okay. You see, so uh, the constitution allows individuals to acquire their own properties. Yes. So therefore, once we marry, the law says they are, the properties belong, belong to both of us. Mm -hmm. However, if one of the parties can establish that this particular property, let's say a piece of land at Aburi, mm -hmm. was acquired solely by the husband, without any contribution from the husband, then that property will be taken out of the spousal property. So okay. what is left is what will be shared. Okay. 
But so, then what is contribution? That is the question. Yes, yes. That's I was coming to that, to yes. Ask. I'm coming okay. to that. Because what's, what's, cause you have situations where I've heard of people who are housewives and maybe it was a man who was working to bring money home and yours was taking care of the children. Where does that fall in all of this? Exactly. So the courts have been very benevolent in this respect. Mm. The courts have said that contribution includes... Assisting financially, mm -hmm. assisting physically. In other words, if the man, for example, is building, the woman doesn't put in any money at all. It's the man's money. But mm -hmm. she goes to the site from time to time. So if I just go and look at the place, I walk around and see, okay, I see the building project is going on, but I don't make any contribution. I'm still in touch. It is still a, a, a spousal oh. property. Okay. Because you went there physically, maybe a couple of times. Okay. And more importantly, going apart from going there, you are the when the man goes to work, he comes back, you are the housewife. What food does he come to eat? Mm -hmm. Food prepared by you. Exactly. You are the one taking care of the children. Mm -hmm. You are the one cleaning the house. Mm -hmm. You are the one making it possible for him to go to work and come back to a peaceful home. Children have been taken care of. Mm -hmm. He has a hot meal on his table. The law says that is a contribution. Okay. And in fact, the court has gone further to say, to talk about emotional support. You give him emotional support. He comes home and he says, oh, the workers are giving me problems and the chief is taking my land and you are the wife. He's crying on your shoulders. That is emotional support. So get, therefore, the court will take all the emotional support, all those things into consideration and come to say that you have made a contribution and therefore the building at Aburi will be spousal property. Wow, that's that's very very interesting. So yes. basically, contribution is very broadly defined under the thank law. Thank you, nicely put. Yes. In fact, better put. <laughs> thank yeah, you. thank you. So another question that would come up: Can I get alimony when I divorce, and who determines how much? Yeah, sorry. Be, the, the, uh, let me just say, explain this quickly. The yes. spousal property. Yes. Please. Now, spouses should also note mm -hmm. that. Just because you have made a contribution does not mean that the property will be shared on a 50-50 basis. People always get that wrong. Mm -hmm. And then I want to cry. Because you've made a contribution doesn't mean that the hus your husband came in with, let's say, one billion uh, CDs, Ghana CDs. Mm -hmm. You didn't make any contribution financially. Mm -hmm. All you did was to stay at home. Of course, yes, it means something. Take, taking care of the children, etc., etc., making his meals. And then there is a dissolution of marriage. You are not going to get half of the building. Okay. We need to get that clearly. Okay. Chances are that depending on your contribution, chances are that the court may say that you get 20% of that building. So it means it's for the court to assess what percentage yes. it is. Okay. So yes. do I take it that the starting point would be 50-50, but depending on the circumstance? Exactly. So okay. the court will say, oh, can I share by 50-50? And the court will say, no, it will not be fair. If it will be fair to share on a 50-50 basis, the court will share on a 50-50 okay. basis. Because maybe when the man got to the roofing stage, the woman made a contribution financially okay. in addition to cooking, et cetera, et cetera. So the court may say that's 50, 50. Okay. Otherwise the court may say that you take 30, the man takes. Um, so the key 70. element here will be fairness. That's what the court will yes. look at. Yes. Okay. Fairness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with the alimony, I was asking, Oh, how yes. much alimony can a person be entitled to and who determines how much? You see, it's the court which determines alimony. We have alimony under our laws okay. and it's there. Okay. So it's the court which determines the percentage or whatever alimony should be paid by one spouse to the other. And you know what? We need to also remember that a court may order the wife mm -hmm. to share her property with the husband mm -hmm. and a court may order a husband to share 
his property with a wife. There's not only one way. You can no go way. both ways. It applies to both uh, husband and wife. And when it comes to alimony too, it's the same thing. Alimony is not part of the spousal property which is shared. Okay. Alimony is something that the court may look at the woman, uh, in particular it's the woman. What kind of lifestyle has the woman been used to? So the husband takes you from your abode mm -hmm. elsewhere, mm -hmm. maybe from a little town mm -hmm. or a village, he brings you to Accra, you stay at Laboni, nice house, you are used to these, uh, maybe a house help, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. There is a disillusion. And maybe you get nothing from the spousal property because mm -hmm. you didn't make any contribution. Mm -hmm. Maybe you even made a contribution, but when the court divided the spousal property, you just got 10%. Mm. Question is, should you now be sent back to your village mm. to continue with that village life? Was it, will it be reasonable? A court may come to a conclusion that no. When even the man came into the marriage, he had four houses. Mm. Let us try and give the small house to the woman so that she does not have to go back to the village. Okay. So the court will take a number of things into consideration okay. before making an order with regard to alimony. Okay. But please also remember that alimony is very, it's, it's not easy to get. Mm. One has to establish the needs. It's it's a base based on the needs of a spouse okay. after a dissolution of marriage. So yes. can alimony be equated to financial provision then? Yes. It, okay. The court may, if I may also add this, the court may order when it comes to alimony, it may be a house, it may be monetary, okay. it may be a house and money. Okay. And it is the court that determines. It's not the husband or the wife who is going to say that, okay, I've got five houses, but I'm going to give the small one at a, a Belimpe to the wife. Mm. No, no, no. It's okay. for the court to decide. Okay. So basically the court will decide and the court yes. will not let you fall from grace to grass just because you got it first. Thank you. Okay. As, if the man can afford only yeah. if okay. the man can afford. Okay. Yes. So what well, about... Not the man. You know, I always both say sides. the man. Both sides. Both <laughs> yes. sides. If the man can afford or the woman can afford. Yeah. That's fine. So what about children? Where there are children in the marriage, what happens to them when there's a divorce? When there's a divorce and the children are of tender age. I mean, if a child is 19, 20, maybe 35, who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares about you. Just go and work and make your own money. But if the children are of tender age, or sometimes you have a child who is even 25, but mm. in need of special care. Okay. You see, in that case, the court will have to decide. Okay. The law says every judge after the dissolution of a marriage must find out whether there are any children of the household. I always say household because could imagine that the, 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 the wife has brought in maybe two children of a dead sister. Mm. Can you see? They are yeah, young, yes. children of tender age. Maybe they are six years and eight years. They've stayed with them. Now there's a dissolution mm. of, of the marriage. The court will have to take into consideration those children too. Mm. You see, so therefore I prefer to say children of the household oh, okay. not so much children of the marriage okay the law says every judge must make that inquiry and mm. the courts uh, again the law says that it is the prime uh, the welfare of the children is paramount okay. therefore a court should do whatever is in the interest of the children okay and not what is in the interest of the wife or the husband in the interests of the of the husband, the okay. father. Okay. So, in fact, the law goes to the extent of saying that if it will be in the best interest of a child for the child to be given to a stranger, custody to be given to a stranger, that's what the court will do. But oh, wow. Yes. You okay. see, because the man may be, the husband may be a man of straw. The, the mother may also be a drunkard. Mm. Or okay. the character of the mother may be bad. Okay. 
your mother has a bad character. It's a prostitute kind of, you know, mm. that's what has brought about the dissolution yeah. of the marriage, yeah. for example. Then the court will prefer to give the child to a stranger. But many a times, the court will consider a family member first before, before considering a stranger. Okay. So that is the paramount uh, uh, interest, the uh, welfare the and child. interests of the child. Okay. Uh, and again, if the child is a baby, baby, like we say, tender age, it, the custody should go to the mother. Okay. Cust custody should go to the mother, unless the mother is of bad character. Mm. Like I said, if she's of bad character. Then the court will consider giving custody to the father. Then sometimes, you see, you come to a stage where the, the father says, I want the boy. Mm. And then the mother says, yeah, I, I want, want the all the children. <laughs> The court will give the custody to the person or the parent who wants custody of all oh. the children. Okay. Because it is very painful to separate siblings. Okay. It's painful to separate um, brothers, brothers and sisters. Okay. The court will always Keep try them to together. put them together. Okay. This is very, very detailed because one would think that when you go for a divorce proceeding, it's automatic that it will either go to the wife or the husband. But now even a stranger can be given your children. Oh, yes. Depending on the, the, the circumstances, circumstances exactly. of the father, of the, of the mother. And then if I may also explain this, you mm -hmm. see, poverty mm -hmm. should not play a part when it comes to custody of children mm -hmm. because the, we can't say that, oh, the father is the is a lawyer and he's got the money, he lives in Laponi and he can, it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Even if the woman cannot afford, the court is likely to order the husband, the ex, mm -hmm. to now find accommodation, okay. reasonable accommodation for the mother and the children so that the children who are of tender age can still be in the care of the mother. The mother. Okay. So poverty per se okay. should not be a determining uh, factor, factor okay. at all. Okay. Yeah. That's very, very enlightening. Um, so another question. I gave you the Maya scenario where she wanted to divorce her husband, but it was expensive, and so she wanted a shortcut. Can they decide to just separate? And is that recognized in law in Ghana? No. No. Okay. Unless it is a, maybe a customary law marriage, maybe. Okay. But if it is an ordinance marriage, then there is no way. If you separate for 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. The woman goes on her merry way. She marries another man, lives wherever in England or even here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. The man also goes on his merry way, marries, stays here with another wife. The marriage is still intact. The 30-year-old oh, wow. marriage is still intact. Even though they've all gone their separate ways. Separate ways. Wow. Because there is no dissolution. Mm. There hasn't been a proper dissolution. Dissolution by the courts. Therefore, if the man should pass away today, the woman can come and claim under law 111. That is under our succession law. Yeah. You know, the woman can still come and say that, well, I am the wife of this man mm. and uh, I am the Okunafu. I'm coming to sit in state and receive homage and all the, mm. the uh, donations. Yes, from the Because the marriage has not been properly dissolved. dissolved. Okay. And what it means then that their marriages, whatever marriages, will be null and void. Oh, wow. So the second marriage will not even be recognized? No. The second marriage will be null and void. And so in that case, can the other spouse also be sued for something? Can an action be brought against them uh, in the bigamy. future? Okay. Is that what you have in yeah. mind? Yeah, maybe bigamy, but um, uh, yeah, you know, bigamy, one of them has to institute the, the action. action. Yes. A policeman can come to you and say that, excuse me. Bigamy. Mm. So if the spouses are not going for bigamy, and yeah. usually they don't, mm. and even if they go, 
the judge may just caution and discharge okay. because the sentence is very short. Maximum, I think, is five months or six mm. months or something. Mm. So, yes, okay. technically, they will be guilty of uh, bigamy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then also there's another... Um, word that people tend to confuse with or will interchange with divorce, annulment. What is annulment? And is it the same as divorce? Yeah, annulment and divorce are totally different. Divorce takes place where the, a, a valid marriage has been created. Mm -hmm. You see, if the parties are in a, in a valid marriage, then of course, the one has to go for a divorce dissolution. Now, annulment, we have, the, we have a, let's say, three types of uh, marriage, ordinance marriage. We have a valid marriage, we have a void marriage, mm -hmm. and we have a voidable marriage. Mm -hmm. You see? Okay. So if the marriage is void, then one goes for annulment. Okay. Because you only go for a petition if the marriage is valid. Okay. If the marriage is void, you go for annulment. Okay. If the marriage is voidable, you go for annulment. Okay. So annulment belongs to void and voidable, mm -hmm. and divorce uh, is for valid valid ordinance. Okay. Ordinance marriages. Okay. So let's say an example of a void marriage mm -hmm. is where a, ma a woman marries a man who is already married under the ordinance mm. yes that's somebody's husband yeah. and you know marriages ordinance marriages is one man one, one woman. woman right one man one wife yes so any woman who comes after whether the man marries the woman under the ordinance the second woman under the ordinance mm or whether he marries the second woman under customary law, there is no marriage. Okay. That marriage does not come into existence. Wow. So the marriage is void. Okay. So therefore, uh, you know, the law says that if a marriage is void, mm -hmm. then the parties don't even have to bother to go to court. Okay. To have the marriage <laughs> set aside, cancelled, if I may use that yes. term. You know, it's more understandable to the layman. So they may go to court to have a void marriage cancelled. Okay. But why do you want to bother to now go to the lawyers? And mm. lawyers have to do this for, mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Go to the lawyers and pay them to file the necessary documents for a void marriage to be annulled. Oh. You can just pack your things and leave. And just like that. And just you, like that. And you can just go and remarry and oh, it will not yes. be an issue. Marry another man it will not be an issue at all if the marriage is void. Okay. You so, go for annulment. So yes. even though it will still be on the reg marriage registrar's books that you are married because you married under ordinance, um, if you discover for some reason that it should be annulled and just walk away, it's yes. fine. Yes. Because the law says that a void marriage does not even come into existence. Okay. That there, So there's nothing there for you to go and... I know. Okay. You see, but again, let's say that the law says that a child mm -hmm. under the age of 18 cannot enter into a valid marriage. So if the man is, let's say, 34 and he marries a 17-year-old mm -hmm. girl, that marriage is what? Void. Void. Okay. You see, that marriage is void. Mm -hmm. But it could be that in the meantime, the 17 year old girl has a child mm. they got married maybe she was 16 mm -hmm. now she's 17 she's got a, a child and the marriage is void mm -hmm. in that case even though the marriage is void it would be a good idea for the child to now speak to the lawyers just speak to a lawyer to help you you go you have the marriage annulled mm -hmm. and then whilst you are in court you ask for maintenance for the child. Okay. Okay. So where there's a child involved, it will be advisable to still go through the annulment proceedings yes. so that you can get for, maintenance for uh, the child. For the child. But again, if you, even if you don't go to court, the law says that if you have a child, mm -hmm. 
you are entitled to go to court for maintenance. Okay. Go to court. Not this necessarily court. under annulment or divorce. Or anything, yes. Whether there is a marriage, there has been a marriage, there hasn't been a marriage. If you have a child and you know that this is the man responsible for the child, even if you are pregnant and you know that this is the man who is responsible for the pregnancy, mm. please speak to a lawyer. Let the lawyer help you go to court for maintenance because it is the duty of a man to take care of a woman mm. during the nine months and during the period, a, a certain period when the child is born, and then to take care of the child. It's a man's responsibility mm. to maintain a child. Of course, both of them, the man's yes. responsibility and the woman's okay. responsibility. So the family tribunal is always there mm. to assess, assist. Okay. So if there was an annulment and before the annulment happened, I didn't know that, the, um, for example, like you said, the person was already married to someone and I didn't know about it. We we're together for five years and we've acquired some property together. That would be spousal property, right? Yes. But, and so what happens in the annulment situation? In, in that case, it's again, another good uh, situation where you have to now go to court. You have to go to court. The void marriage will be annulled and then the properties will be shared accordingly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Using the same uh, as if they were spousal uh, properties. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, Mrs. Then, uh, yes, void. Me. Voidable. Okay. A marriage, remember we said void, void, or, or yeah, but yeah. the voidable mm -hmm. is totally different from uh, the void, void, and then they they occur in about four instances. So okay, I don't know whether people have this that situation, but if uh, if there is a marriage and then the one of the parties, for example, uh, refrains from consummating the marriage, in other words, having sex with a man mm -hmm. for the first time, okay. The marriage is voidable. Or let's say the woman or the man was suffering from insanity mm. and one of the parties did not know. That, in that case, the marriage is voidable. Mm -hmm. Or the woman was carrying another man's child unbeknown to the husband. In that case, the marriage is, is, a, is mm, voidable void. and not void. So yeah. with voidable... Um, it's not like void where you can see that I'm just walking away. Yes. What happens with the voidable as well? With if the marriage is voidable, then one can go for annulment. Okay. But until such time that the marriage has been annulled, the party cannot enter into a valid marriage. Okay. Yes. So for that one, you have to actually go to the courts. <laughs> yes, to okay. have it set aside. Otherwise. If you enter into another marriage, that second marriage is now void. Okay. It's now and void. void. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Robin, this has been a very, very insightful discussion. I, I wish we could continue, but time is not on our side. Um, do you have any last words for our audience before we end? Yes. What I would say is that, you know, always try as much as possible to talk to a lawyer, talk to a lawyer before a petition for divorce is filed. No, not filed. In other words, before you even start considering a divorce, a divorce please speak to a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And even before you decide to marry, it is so crucial that one speaks to a lawyer. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Those are very for great last me. words. Thank you too for coming. That's I think grateful. my key takeaways would be that even emotional support counts as contribution. Yes. Um, sometimes I think it's overlooked, especially when there's no financial contribution, but yes. it's also very important. And I've also learned about the fact that separation in Ghana is not legal. So or legally recognized so even if you separate and you go and marry somewhere else later on that other marriage would not be recognized yes. so that is why it is important to speak to a lawyer all the time when you are engaging in such proceedings thank you once again for honoring our invitation and giving us such insightful um information and we hope that when we call on you again you'll be happy to come and join us 
once again listeners thank you for joining us and listening to this episode this has been community first where we have legal and social conversations with the community catch you on our next episode bye